Hello, and thanks for joining us for another exciting episode of Inventor's Quick Tips. Today we are talking about the benefits of building a prototype of your invention and some important factors to consider for doing so. So there are two key reasons for doing this. Invention refinement and promotional purposes. Let's briefly talk about each. Let's start with an example. Suppose you invented a folding scissors. Before filing an expensive patent application, you would want to know how well does it cut? How comfortable is it to use? Are there any adjustments needed to make it more usable, more manufacturable? In many cases, the only way you'll know is to actually try it. So with a working prototype, you can try out your invention, see what works and what doesn't, make improvements, and include those improvements in the future patent application. So there is benefit to doing some prototyping before filing a patent application. Now, there are some cases where an inventor can build a prototype all by his or herself. But in many cases, an inventor may need some help with some or all of the prototyping. Again, it depends on the inventor's skills and abilities as it relates to the invention. So if you have an invention that involves a lot of software and some mechanical stuff, and you're good at the software but you're not good at the mechanical stuff, you might need to hire a welder, a carpenter, or what have you for the mechanical stuff. Similarly, if you're good at the mechanical stuff but you're not as skilled in software and your invention requires some kind of software or an app, you might need to hire some uh, consultants to help you develop this software for your invention. So in some, and in some cases you might need no help at all or you might need a lot of help. It all depends on what your skill set or the other co-inventors, if they're there, what their skill sets are. So where the skill set is deficient, you might need to get some help. So, uh, how do we get help? Well, in many cases we hire consultants. So depending on what you need to have done. You might need designers, machinists, artists, programmers. So hiring consultants is an option for an inventor. However, before you do that, we need to take a quick detour to talk about inventorship. Inventorship is the concept of who actually contributed to the invention. So why are we talking about this now in a prototyping discussion? Well, it's critically important to understand that the correct inventors must be listed on a patent or it can be invalidated. So if you end up coming with coming up with a really valuable invention, you don't want to have it end up being invalidated because the inventorship is wrong. Okay? And it is not unusual for consultants to contribute to an invention for which they were hired to work on. Because many times the consultants are, as they're putting things together or getting things to work, they're actually contributing inventive concepts to your broad idea. Now, if the consultant does end up inventing, that consultant needs to be listed as an inventor on your patent application. But with the proper agreements in place before the work starts, you can obtain the rights to the invention. So you, if you're going to hire a consultant, consider having a consultant's agreement for the assignment of inventions. And uh, a patent attorney, a local patent attorney, could help you with what that type of agreement should look like. Also, you may want to consider filing a provisional application before engaging with the consultants just so you can establish a date for what you had in your possession before you started hiring or engaging with consultants. So, in summary, about getting help. Using consultants and services to assist in building a prototype is helpful in certain cases. Now consider filing a provisional application first to at least get what you have uh, on file with the patent office. Also consider consultant agreements for assignment and make sure you maintain the correct inventorship. So let's talk about an example sequence of invention development. So we have these five steps, A through E. Step A is document your idea. Step B, file a provisional application on your idea as it exists before you do any prototyping that you need help with, okay? So 
So you do step A and step B, get that done, your provisional application filed. Then in step C, you work on your prototypes. And step D, you note any improvements from the actual real prototypes. Then in step E, when you file your regular patent application, which has to be done within one year of step B, you can include the improvements in that regular patent application. So all the cool tips and tricks that you learned by making prototypes, those could be valuable. So you'll want to have them in your regular patent application. Now, for those of you who are unsure about Step A and Step B, I have other episodes that are dedicated to documentation of ideas and describing the provisional application process. So I will put links to those videos in the description. So if you need a little bit of uh, assistance in understanding how to get started documenting your idea or what filing provisional application is all about, then you can check out those videos that I'll put in the description. And now to the second reason, a promotional tool. A working prototype allows an invention to be demonstrated or tried. And it can also be useful for making promotional materials and advertisements. And most importantly, it can be a very convincing tool for in interested parties and potential investors. If you're trying to get someone to get on board with either buying your invention or selling your product or investing in your company, Having a working prototype is incredibly valuable tool for doing that. So even though it can be a lot of work to make a prototype, uh, in many cases, it can be well worth the effort. What if you have something that can't be easily built? You're working on a nuclear collider or something that is complex and not easily built. Then consider the next best thing, simulations, animations, storyboards, so if you're building a complex e-commerce system, you might not be able to easily prototype it, but you could at least have storyboards that show how the user interface might work. So consider an alternative. If it absolutely is just not feasible to prototype it, then at least try some other techniques such as detailed simulation, storyboards, illustrations, or any other way to fully get to at least partially experience what the invention should do. Understood, if you're building a spacecraft, it might be hard to prototype a full-scale model of it, but uh, in many cases, you can prototype it to some level, but if you can't, then consider these other options. So in summary, prototyping can make your invention better and easier to sell and promote. And of course, again, make sure that you are protected prior to engaging with any outside help, such as consultants, marketing, things like that. Thanks again for checking out this episode of Inventor's Quick Tips. Have a great day.